celebrate and explore their shared humanity through Shakespearean work. So thank you for gathering today to explore everything about Shakespeare. Um, you heard a little bit of Shakespeare, you're going to get a whole bunch, because we have 38 play titles up here that we are going to work through. 400 years ago tomorrow, William Shakespeare passed away. And the world is using this as a reason to celebrate 400 years of Shakespeare's words and characters and stories being in the world. We have some great special guests today from Opera Delaware and the E52 Student Theater Group at University of Delaware. But our theme for the day is Shakespeare is for everyone. So we have bankers and lawyers and teachers and community leaders getting up here ready to strut their stuff on our platform. We're going to get right to it. And I want to welcome up uh, Mark Fields, who is our kind host here at the Grand. Mark not only is our host, but was the first person that volunteered to participate in Shakespeare Day. And you chose this speech particularly. What, what is it about this speech you're about to do that? that you liked? Well, I'm doing the Hollow Crown speech from Richard II, which is a more obscure Shakespeare play, but one of my favorites. I, I first did this back uh, when I was an actor in my former life in, in college, but uh, I, love the, uh, I love the speech because it's about how uh, kings think they're special, and one of the ways they find out they're special is they rarely die of old age. <laughs> I'll take it away. Thank you. For God's sake, let us sit upon the ground and tell sad stories of the death of kings. How some have been deposed, some slain in war, some haunted by the ghosts they have deposed, some poisoned by their wives, some sleeping killed, all murdered. For within the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of a king keeps death his court. And there the antic sits, scoffing his state and grinning at his pomp, allowing him a breath, a little scene to monarchize, kill, and kill with looks, infusing him with self and vain conceit as if this flesh that walls about our life were brass impregnable. And humored thus, comes at the last, and with a little pin, bores through his castle wall. And farewell, king. <laughs> Montagues, Montague group, please line up. So how this is going to work, we're going to bring people in one after another. They're going to read their text. We're going to have a chance to try to guess, and then they will pull their play title off the wall here. So we have a visual countdown of now the 37 remaining plays. So up next, Sophia Hansen from Newcastle County. I'm reading from Hamlet, and my family and I went to Elsinore last year for vacation. And my kids threatened to start writing a Shakespeare play, and I sent David an email from uh, Elsinore saying you had some competition from a six-year-old and a nine-year-old in playwriting, but they said to cancel that project since they got back, so here we go. What a piece of work is a man. How noble is reason. How infinite is faculty. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. Thank you. And take your play title off the floor, Sophia. Take your play title off. And now we have Bernita Dorsey from WSFS Bank. I don't have a nice crown like she has. <laughs> I'm reading from Henry the Sixth, Part One. <laughs> Marriage is a matter of more worth than to be dealt in by attorneyship. For what is wedlock force but a hell? An age of discord and continual strife, whereas the contrary bringeth bliss and a pattern of celestial peace. <laughs> and take your play title. Take your play title. And I'm gonna ask our participants not to announce the play so we can have the audience try to guess what the play is. So up next, Frankie Gallucci, who happens to be one of our Delaware Shakespeare Festival apprentices this summer. The blood, you starveling, you elf skin, you dried meat's tongue, you bull's pizzle, you stockfish. Oh, for breath to utter what is like thee. You tailor's yard, you sheep, you bow case, you vile standing tuck. And that is from? Henry the Fourth, Part One! <laughs> All right, next up, from the new, the, this, who's next? Over here, next up, Ken Grant from Epic Marketing, Downtown Visions, and an award-winning Bollywood dancer. Yes! <laughs> okay. 
first. Uh, everybody smile. <laughs> nice. Mad world, mad kings, mad composition. Be great in act as you have been in thought. Let not the world see fear and sad distrust. Govern the motion of a kingly eye. Be stirring as the time. Be fire with fire. Any guesses? That's from King John. Next up, from the Community Education Building, Linda Gillo and Kelly Wilson. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits, they have their entrances. One man in his time plays many parts. His acts give seven ages. The play is... As you like it, correct! Next up, from Brand One Realty Trust, Esther Wyatt. prophesy with an earring of the main chance of things as yet to come to life, who in their seeds and weak beginnings lie and treasured. Such things are the hatch and brood of time. Any guesses? That is from Henry IV, Part Two. <laughs> and now we have from the Greater Wilmington Visitors and Convention Bureau, Jessica Pittman. Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. <laughs> oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called. What's that from? <laughs> Romeo! <laughs> any other Montagues? And Montague from, uh, this is Joel Friedlander from Friedlander and Boris Locker. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall never go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. That is from Henry V. Very good. Henry V. And is that all of our Montague group? Very good. All right, now it's time for one of our special guests. Uh, opera Delaware, in just a matter of weeks, is going to be filling the Grand Opera House with not one, but two Shakespearean operas. They'll be presenting Verdi's Falstaff, one of the masterpieces of all operatic literature, and a lost version of Hamlet by Franco Faccio. Uh, so, and then we're also doing a collaborative performance with Opera Delaware called Shakespeare in Song at the Opera Delaware studio. So in May, May starting May 14th, we'll have two weeks of Shakespeare opera. And we're very happy to have right now from the cast of Hamlet, Matthew Vickers, who will be singing the to be or not to be aria from Franco Faccio's Hamlet. So we're gonna let them set up and then welcome Matthew to the stage. Yes. <laughs> 
amici della cramavita verranno a popolare quale sarà l'eternità di sonno per cui si impiglia l'uomo de mente e ne esce il dubbio se ne esce il lungo Vickers from Opera Delaware's production of Amleto, which you can see here on the Grand Opera House stage starting in just a few weeks. If you are wondering what's going on out here, this is Shakespeare Day. We're the Delaware Shakespeare Festival. Tomorrow is the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death, and we are celebrating by hearing lines read by community members from every single one of Shakespeare's 38 plays. We are 10 plays through the list, and I'm going to ask the Capulets group to start lining up now, because the Capulets, you are next from the Capulets. We also just want to remind all of our participants to swallow the microphone here so everyone assembled can hear you. So let's have first up from, from the Capulets, let us start with Matthew Stell from Highmark, Delaware. Yay! With your souls of geese that bear shapes of men, how have you run from slaves that apes would be Pluto and hell? Men and charge home, or by the fires of heaven, I'll leave the foe and make my wars on you. That is from Coriolanus. Hey, the title off from this man. All right, now we're going to welcome up to the stage from uh, Delaware College of Art and Design, Amanda Curry and Stuart Barron. And actually, I need a volunteer from the audience for this one—a volunteer who would like to act like they're a sculpture. Anyone? 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 Oh, Come on over, it's Julianne Cross, our hey. sculpture! <laughs> so Julianne, you just need to stand right in front of the mics and pretend you're a sculpture. There we go. <laughs> the statue is but newly fixed. The color's not dry. What? 
was he that did make it? See, my Lord, would you not even breathe? The fixture of her eye has motion at it. Are we mocked with art? I'll draw the curtain. My Lord's almost so far transported that he'll think anon it lives. There is an air comes from her. What fine chisel could ever yet cut breath? Let no man mock me, for I will kiss her. <laughs> Good my Lord! Forbear! The ruddiness upon her lip is wet. You'll mar it if you kiss it. Stain your own with oily painting. For more amazement, if you can behold it, I'll make the statue move indeed. <laughs> and that was from Winter's Tale. Correct. All right, next up from Ninth Street Bookshop, Gemma Buckley. <laughs> hath never fed of the dainties that are bred in the book. He hath not eaten paper, as it were. He hath not drunk ink. His intellect is ins insatiable. Or, uh, excuse me. <laughs> His intellect is not replenished. He is only an animal, only sensible in the duller parts. We, too, are the bookmen. <laughs> Any guesses that is wrong? Love Flavors Lost! <laughs> Alright, and next up from Faithful Friends, bearing in tow a dog, <laughs> Shannon O'Needle! I think Crab, my dog, be the sourest natured dog that lives. My mother weeping, my father wailing, my sister crying, our maid howling, and our cat wringing her hands, and all our house in a great perplexity. Yet did not this cruel-hearted cur shed one tear. He is a stone, a very pebble stone, and has no more pity in him than a dog. <laughs> and that was from Two Gentlemen of Corona. Faithful friends with a wonderful partner was that year supplying us a dog every night to play crab on the stage. <laughs> All right, next up from the Capulets, Cynthia Primo Martin from Trustees of Color. This one's for Prince. Yay! Love is not love, which alters when an alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempus and is never shaken. What play is that from? It's a trick question, it's a sonnet! <laughs> Besides writing 38 plays, she wrote 154 sonnets, so thank you, Cynthia, for being our quiz of the day. All right, where are the rest of my calculus? I need to see. All right. Next up, Tracy, Tracy Friswell Jacobs from Mott Charter and Delaware Arts Conservatory and Jennifer Fritch from the Grand Opera House. I pray thee, tell me what thou thinkest of me, that you do think you are not what you are. Oh, if I think so, I think the same of you. <laughs> then think you right, I am not what I am. Oh, I would you were as I would have you be. I love thee so that mocker all thy pride, nor wit nor reason can my passion hide. By innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none shall be mistress of it, save I alone. And that is from Twelfth Night. Absolutely <laughs> correct. <laughs> Next up. My capulets are all blocked behind each other. I can't see who's next. <laughs> next up, we're gonna go Alan Jordan from the Delaware Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> the man that hath no music in himself, nor is not moved with conquered of sweet sounds, is fit for treasons, stratagems, and spoils. The motions of his spirit are dull as night, and his affections dark as Erebus. Let no such man be trusted. Mark the music. That is from 
the Merchant of Venice. <laughs> Next up, from the Light of the Queen Foundation, Tina Betts, and from the Delaware Division of the Arts, Paul Wiegrath. <laughs> I wonder that you will still be talking, Senor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What? My dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible that Disdain should die while she had such meat food to feed it as Senor Benedict? Well, it is certain I am loved of all ladies. <laughs> I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than hear a man swear he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind. Indeed, still in that mind. So some gentleman or other shall scape a predestinate scratched face. <laughs> well, scratching could not make it worse. And where a face such as yours were. <laughs> oh! Oh! That is from... And next up, performing arts reviewer Greer Firestone. Spoiler alert, uh, I am horribly miscast in this. I thought of myself as a bit puckish. When doth my outcoming actions doth demonstrate the native art and purity of my heart. In compliment extern, just not long after, I wear my heart upon my sleeve for dolls to peck at. It is not who I am. That is from <laughs> Othello Yago. <laughs> and it's very, you win it. Oh, you got to, you got to take your playtime. He was so concerned with his dastardly exit. Quick <laughs> getaway. Is that all my Capulets? Are there anyone left in the Capulets? All right, great. It is now time for one of our next guests. E52 Student Theater at the University of Delaware is right now working on a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. And we're very happy now to present a short scene from the E52 Student Theater production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. serve the fairy queen to dew her orbs upon the green Up the cow slips tall her pensioners be in these gold coat spots you see those be rubies fairy favors in their freckles live their savers i must now see some dewdrops here and, and hang a pearl in every cow slips ear oh, farewell thou lob of spirits i'll be gone our queen and all our elves come here and on. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen not come within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell and wrath. A lovely boy stolen from him. And now they never meet in grove or green by fountain clear or by starlight spangled sheen. But they do square that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups then hide them there. Well, well, either I mistake your shape and making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are you not she? <coughs> you that hobgoblin are called and sweet puck. Are you not she? The house speaks right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest with Oberon and make him smile, and I, uh, Fat and bean fed horse beguile, neighing in likeness of a Billy Ball. <laughs> Sometimes work I in a gossip's bowl, and very likeness of a rusty crab. <laughs> and when she drinks, against her lips I bob, and on her with her do lap pour the ale. <laughs> the wisest aunt telling the saddest tale, sometimes for a three foot stool mistakes me. <laughs> the 
and slip by from her bunk down topple she the tailor cries and falls into a coffin all the choir hold their hips and laugh and knees and mirth and swear a merrier hour was never wasted there uh, but room fairy here comes Oberon. oh and hear my mistress would that he were gone <laughs> was E52 Student Theater presenting a short scene from A Midsummer Night's Dream. If you are wondering what the heck is going on out here, we're the Delaware Shakespeare Festival and this is Shakespeare Day. Tomorrow, April 23rd, 2016, is the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death, and we're celebrating today by having community members read lines from every single one of Shakespeare's plays. We are 18 in, only 20 to go. So at this point, I'm going to ask the uh, mechanicals to start lining up, the mechanicals to start lining up. And again, one of our themes for today is Shakespeare is for everyone. We are going to put that to the test right now, because I'm just going to have a random volunteer from the audience come up and say two lines of Shakespeare. Who would like to come up right now and say two lines, they happen to be rhyming, two lines of Shakespeare. Who wants to come up? Come on up, sir! Welcome our random volunteer! It's a tall random volunteer. What is your name, sir? Chuck. This is Chuck. Hi, Chuck. So Shakespeare frequently writes for kings. You are at court right now. When our king finishes his line, if everyone can give a big huzzah. huzzah. Sound drums and trumpets. Farewell, sour annoy. For here, I hope, begins our lasting joy. Huzzah! Very good. Thank you, Chuck. This was, did they know what that was from? It's a Henry. <laughs> Henry the Sixth. First up from the Mechanicals, from the Delaware Arts Alliance, Guillermina Gonzalez. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do leaves after them. The good is all in dirt with their bones. <coughs> he was my friend, faithful and just to me. My heart is in the coffin, there with Caesar, and I must pause That's till from. he come back to <laughs> That is from? Julius Caesar! <laughs> Next up from the News Journal, Betsy Price and Gail O'Donnell. I will not lend thee a penny. Why? Then the world's my oyster, which I will sword will open. Not a penny! I am damned in hell for swearing to gentlemen, my friends. You were good soldiers and tall fellows. And when Mistress Bridget lost the handle of her fan, I <coughs> took it upon my honor that thou hadst it not. Did thou not share? Hadst thou not fifteen pence? Reason, you rogue, reason. Thinkest thou I'll endanger my soul gratis? I do relent. That is from Merry Wives of Windsor. All right, now I'd like to welcome to the stage from the Latin American Community Center, Laura Adarve and Jose Menivar. And I want to give a brief introduction of this. Right now, Delaware Shakespeare Festival and the Latin American Community Center are engaged in a partnership called Our America, Our Shakespeare. Uh, in association with our production of the Comedy of Errors, which is in some way about the experience that, uh, the confusing experiences that three newcomers have in a foreign land. We're doing a writing workshop with the Latin American Community Center, where members of the Latino community are writing of their stories, arriving here in America, connecting that to the Comedy of Errors. So, Shakespeare is for everyone, Shakespeare is for everyone, also in Spanish. So we're going to start with 
a version of the scene in Spanish, and then you'll hear it in English as well. Puede ser que tu deber de esposo lo has olvidado? Hermano noble, entra y consuela a mi hermana. Aliéntala. Llama a la esposa. Dulce maestra, no es esposa mía tu hermana lagrimosa. Mucho más, me arrodillo ante de ti mucho. ¿Pero qué? ¿Loco eres para así razonar? Tú eres lo que amo y contigo pasaré la vida. Ninguna esposa tengo ni tienes tu marido hasta la fecha. Dame tú la mano. And now in English. And may it be that you have quite forgot a husband's office, then gentle brother, get you in again. Comfort my sister, cheer her, call her wife. Your weeping sister is no wife of mine. Far more, far more to you do I decline. What are you mad that you do reason so? Thee will I love and with thee lead my life. Thou hast no husband yet, nor I no wife. Give me thy hand. <laughs> And that, of course, is from the Comedy of Mirrors. Up top there, to the right. Great. All right, next up from the Mechanicals, Dr. Sheridan Kingsbury from Delaware State and Dr. Maria Perez. Come, come, you wasp. In faith, you are too angry. If I be waspish, best beware my sting. <laughs> my remedy is then to pluck it out. Aye, if the fool could find where it lies. <laughs> Who knows not where a wasp wear his sting? In his tail. In his tongue. Whose tongue? Yours, if you talk of tails. And so, farewell. <laughs> what? With my tongue? In your tail? <laughs> hey, good Kate! I am a gentleman! That I'll try! <laughs> and that, of course, is from... Hey, 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 hey. Next up, Suzanne Stein from Sydney, Austin, and Andrew Mitchell from Delaware Shakespeare Festival. <laughs> Love indeed. Tell me how much. There's beggary in the love that can be reckoned. I'll set a born how far to be beloved. <laughs> then must thou needs find out new heaven, new earth. Eternity is in our lips and eyes. Bliss in our brows bent. Not our hearts so pure, a poor, but was a race of heaven. They are so still. Let Rome in right. Tiber melt and the wide arch of the ranged empire fall. Here's my space. The noblest of life is to do thus. With such a mutual pair and such a twain can do it. That is from Anthony and Cleopatra. Next up from the Mechanicals, Henry Moncure from Bank of America. I have had a dream. Past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he go about to expound this dream. The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste, nor his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. That's from A Midsummer Night's Dream. From the Delaware Zoological Society of the Brandywine Zoo, Mike Allen. Another tall community volunteer. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. Withdraw, my lord, I'll help you to a horse. Slave, I've set my life upon a cast, and I will stand the hazard of the die. I think there be six Richmonds in the field, five of my slaves today instead of him. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. Do I have more mechanicals? Yes. Oh, over. All right. 
on the left, from Wellington University, Kate Cottle and Dan Young. They say all lovers swear more performance than they are able, and yet reserve an ability that they never perform, vowing more than the perfection of ten, and discharging less than the tenth of one. They that have the voice of lions and the axe of hares, are they not monsters? <laughs> are there such? Such are not we. Praise us if we prove few words to fair faith, truth and tru truest, not truer than Troilus. That was a hint. Really it's from Troilus and Cressida. <laughs> Any more mechanicals? All right. It's time for one more instance of random Shakespeare. <laughs> so, Shakespeare wrote great kings. He also wrote amazing villains. Who would like to come up and give a villainous line reading of one of Shakespeare's most villainous characters? I'm a volunteer. Come on up, come on up. <laughs> All right, can you read that for me right there? Just those last, those two lines? I'll, I'll whisper to you, right? Okay. If one good deed. If one good deed. Titus Andronicus. Right, you gotta come back up and pull your title off the plate. Come back up. Titus Andronicus, right there. Pull it off the board. All right, we are on to our last set of plays. Again, if any of you are wondering what the heck is going on out here, we're at the Delaware Shakespeare Festival, and this is Shakespeare Day. Tomorrow, April 23rd, is the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death. Delaware Shakespeare Festival is celebrating with all of these fine people by having lines from every single one of Shakespeare's plays read in the course of, and we're going to make it within an hour. Right? Our last group is the Groundlings. The Groundlings were the most passionate audience members in Shakespeare's day who paid a penny and could stand very close to the stage, almost as close as you are standing now. So we're going to have the Groundlings line up. The Groundlings are lining up. And we will start with, from Domain Hudson, John Halton. Ladies. A general welcome from His Grace salutes ye all this night he dedicates to fair, content, and you. None here, he hopes, in all this noble bevy has brought with her one care abroad. He would have all as merry as first good company, good wine, good welcome can make good people. That's from almost as random as two noble kinsmen, Henry VIII. <laughs> From the Christina Cultural Arts Center, Tizzy Lockman. Was it I? Yea, it was, proud Frenchwoman. Could I come near your beauty with my nails? I'd set my Ten Commandments in your face. Yes. Yeah, well, that is from. She gave it a hit with her hand gestures. Henry the Sixth, Part Two. No. And we've been. I butchered the title, because it's Dana, Delaware Alliance for... <laughs> <laughs> Sheila will announce herself. This is Sheila Bravo! The Delaware Alliance for Nonprofit non Advancement. Oh. This Delaware Shakespeare Festival is a proud member of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am not of that feather to shake off my friend when he must need me. Tis not enough to help the feeble up, but to support him after. That is from... Wow, we got it! Time in of Athens! <laughs> from PNC Bank, Mary Liz Biddle! Since I received command to 
to do this business. I have not slept one wink, <laughs> but fear no more the heat of the sun, nor the furious winter's rages. Thou, thy worldly task hast done, home art gone, and tame thy wages. The game is up. Um, Cymbeline close to the Miss of Romance is my friend. Local performing artist Jerry Wiegrass. <laughs> Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Macbeth! We can say we're outdoor in a theater, we're not indoor in a theater. We can say. From the Delaware Humanities Forum, Marilyn Whittington. Much of the court to your good, where to if you'll end a willing ear and climb, what's mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. That is from we're getting measure, measure for measure. <laughs> we should be able to get the guesses now. We only have four left. <laughs> from JP Morgan Chase, Renata Kowalczyk. and drowned the cops. You sulfurous and thought executing fires bump couriers to old cleaving thunderbolts. Singe my wide head, and though all shaking thunder strike fence, the thick rotundity of the world. of our life is of a mingled yarn, good and ill together. Our virtues would be proud if our faults whipped them not, and our crimes would despair if they were not cherished by our virtues. That is from, we got three choices, All's Well That Ends Well. From the Grand Opera House, Meredith McAloon. Pushes are we wenches driven to when fifteen once has found us? First, I saw him. I, seeing him, thought he was a goodly man. I loved him. Extremely loved him. Infinitely loved him. Once he kissed me, I loved my lips the better ten days after. <laughs> would he would do so every day. That is from... Two noble kids there! That's all the ground leaks, right? That's all. Yes. Uh oh. We have one. We have one play left. I thought that was everyone. Uh. Amy Watson, bitch. We were just kind of talking yesterday, and I, you said that you you knew something from the tempest. Can you come save the day, please? All right. <laughs> this is it. Our last one. Now ended. These are actors, as I foretold you. We're all spirits and melted into air, into thin air. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. <laughs> Theater, and all over 50 of our community volunteers who came out to prove on this most important day for Shakespeare that Shakespeare is for everyone. Again, we're Delaware Shakespeare Festival. We're a professional theater company in our 14th year of operations. 
We hope you come out this summer to see the Comedy of Errors and our new community tour production of Pericles. Thank you and happy Shakespeare Day! How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Well, that was fun. Huh? Apparently. Apparently. Somebody tries to take it away from me. Congratulations. Top for Delhi. Ah, no, that's okay. Uh, it's Sarah. It's like this. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's Sarah's Italian for to be. Oh, okay. Why are we talking with you? Hey, there we go. Thank you. Oh, are we still, did it still work? Yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching.